All right, today we're going to go over the RH-160E by Infasco. This is the latest Italian-made rivet nut tool. It's a spin-pull-spin spin style tool. First thing you want to do is take the tool out, and you want to go ahead and put the rubber bumper on the bottom to protect the tool. Uh, we're going to go ahead, and you'll see it comes with 632 all the way to half 13 thread sizes. So we're going to go ahead and put our case away. All right, now that the tool has been uncased, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hook our airline up to it. Uh, it just fits in. Uh, in order to actuate the tool, there's a little valve right here. Push that up. That provides air to the tool. In order to collapse the rib nut, we're going to pull the trigger to reverse it out. Press the red button. All right, next is a big warning. Never ever install a riv nut into a material thickness until you know exactly what the tool is set for. Okay, next we're going to talk about the anvil adjustment on the RH-160E. First thing we want to do anytime we work on the tool is we want to make sure that we go ahead and disconnect the air pressure. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take an open end riv nut and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to thread that onto the tool. And what I'm doing is I want to make sure that I engage the maximum number of threads of the riv nut. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and move my anvil out to meet it. And it's quite simple. Once you do that, you go ahead and you put your anvil jam nut down. That way you make sure that you have the maximum number of threads engaged. So what I'm going to do next is I'll go ahead and I'll unthread this and I'll go ahead and put a closed end part on. That's a little bit different because with a closed end part, the mandrel will actually bottom out because it cannot penetrate through the bottom of the part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen my anvil jam nut and then I'm gonna turn my anvil all the way into the mandrel housing. And I'm gonna thread my riv nut on until it bottoms out. And once it bottoms out, I'm going to go ahead and move my anvil out to meet the head of the riv nut. Now, before I lock this down, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this riv nut and I'm going to turn it a turn and a half, loosening it. And then that way I ensure that the mandrel isn't bottomed out in the actual riv nut itself and it'll collapse correctly. All right, so next what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and change the mandrel on our RH-160E. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the air pressure. That way I can go internally inside the tool. I'm going to unthread my riv nut here. Going to take off my anvil and my anvil jam nut. Next I'm going to go back and I'm going to take off my mandrel housing. It's just on threads. Slide that off. Next, I'm going to go ahead and pull the mandrel toward me. And what that's going to do is it's going to show you the hex drive that's in there. I can go back in with a new 3816 mandrel or any one of the mandrels in the kit. They all use a hex driver that's magnetic like this. Again, I'm going to make sure that's seated correctly. I'm going to go back in to the tool. There's a cutout here. I'm going to go in. I'm going to make sure that hex driver just slides right in there like so. Again, I'm going to pop it out. Make sure that driver lines up and press it in like so. Go back. Slide my mandrel housing over. Thread this back on. Again, I'm going to get my anvil ready. Once this is threaded in place, I'm going to go ahead and then thread my anvil back on. Keep in mind, we want to make sure we have the maximum number of threads engaged. I'm going to thread my riv nut on there to make sure that it's flush. Move my anvil to meet it, just like so. Go back, lock all these down, and then actuate my air pressure. Okay, so exactly how do you set the proper stroke for this particular riv nut tool? It's quite simple. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our riv nut. We're going to determine what the maximum grip of this riv nut is. 
And we do that by looking in our catalog. And typically you need the part number, but often the marking of the rib nut is on the head and it'll tell you what the grip range is. So you'll see the manufacturer's mark and then you'll see a blank head or one radial mark or two radial marks and that'll tell you what grip range the fastener is. Now this particular rib nut has a grip range of 115 to 200 thousandths and that means that the maximum material thickness allowed for this particular rib nut is 200 thousandths thick. Alright, so next we need to determine our material thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to basically mic my material thickness. It measures 120 thousandths. And that's important because when you're installing the rib nut, you want to make sure that the tool is set for that exact material thickness. Okay, when we're calculating the stroke formula for this particular tool, please make sure that you follow the recommended pull-up factor chart supplied by Infasco. If you have any questions at all about the pull-up factor or the actual stroke of the tool, you can call us at 856-662-7660. All right, to go ahead and make that adjustment, the first thing we have to do is we actually have to go in and we have to disconnect our air. All right, now that the air is disconnected, we're going to go to the bottom of the tool. And at the bottom of the tool is an adjustment knob. There's a plus and a minus. Now what we want to do is we want to increase the stroke for thinner materials, which means that we would turn it in the plus direction. For thicker materials, we want less stroke, so we turn it in the minus direction. So what I'm going to do is I want to increase my stroke. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to turn it in the plus direction. And you'll hear it click. And every full revolution that you make, you turn 22 thousandths in the plus direction or you decrease the stroke 22 thousandths in the minus direction. All right, now that we've determined that the proper stroke to collapse this rib nut on this particular tool is 0.235, what we're going to do is we're going to measure the overall length of the rib nut, which is 1.025. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 1.025 I'm going to subtract the 0.235, which we figured from our formula, and that tells me that the correct collapse length of this fastener is 0.790. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the fastener on, I'm going to collapse it, pull it off, and I'm actually going to go ahead and mic it now that it's been collapsed. And this tell me, tells me that it's at 895. So what I have to do is I have to increase the stroke. Right now we're at 895, but we want it to be 0 0.790. So it's very simple to make that adjustment. Now my rib nut is going on the tool. I'm going to collapse it, reverse it out, and I'm actually going to go to my calipers and I'm going to measure this. And right now I'm at 0.8. 855, which means I need to increase the stroke again. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect my air, go back to the bottom of the tool because I want to go to 790. And again, I've got my tool here, my numbers. I'm going to increase the stroke. Go back, and now I've got my tool. I'm going to reconnect my air. Now I'm going to cycle the tool once, and I'm going to go back, put my fastener on, I'm going to pull it, reverse it out, turn my air off. I'm actually going to go back, and I'm going to put my calipers on there again. I'm going to measure it. I'm at 784, which basically means now that I want to be at 790, I'm within six thousandths. So what I'm going to do is, I'm at 784, I'm going to decrease my stroke, so I'm going to turn it in the minus direction, just a hair, and that should be good for 120 thousandths thick material. 
All right, so I'm gonna start the first thread of the rib nut, push it on, go to my plate, pull the black trigger, hit the red button, and reverse it out. 